During the last month of June, I carried out a stay of several weeks in the north of Peru in a little town named Senendin. Senendin? Uh, this little town um, of uh, more or less 15,000 inhabitants is situated 150, um, 150 kilometers on the east from the city of Cajamarca. The purpose of my stay was to realize a first fieldwork investigation to collect ethnographical and historical data about a possible Marano memory in the region. The town of Selendin and its region present, indeed, a strange distinctive feature according to an oral tradition, which is a commonplace, a great part of its population has the reputation to be from Jewish origin. The theme of a Jewish origin of Senendin's population is a commonplace spread not only in the region but even in all Peru. And it is not only a matter of oral tradition, a lot of books and articles repeat it. For example, the Geographical and Historical Dictionary of Cajamarca, written by Carlos Burga Larea, published in uh, 1983, confirms that this Jewish population has escaped from Brazil during the 17th century. Besides, according to the commonplace, this reputation of a Jewish origin is based on obvious evidence, physical and moral evidence, not religious, physical and moral evidence. For example, people here are white-skinned. They are the whitest population in all Peru, fair-haired and with blue eyes, and better, green eyes. And they have also other qualities, high qualities for two types of occupation. First, of course, for business, they have high, high quality for commercial occupation, and second, for intellectual work, for <laughs> studies. And another feature, as a consequence, they are always traveling, migrating, wandering, like the wandering Jew in all the world. We know that the Portuguese New Christians were already residing in Peru since the 17th century. We can follow the inquisitorial trials and the repression during the colonial period. But what we don't know is if some Maranism survived in Peru until recent time. There is a gap of information between the inquisitorial trials and the recent contemporary episode, which is also well known, I mean the formal conversion to Judaism, to Orthodox Judaism, of a group of uh, some hundred people who came from North Peru, from Selendin and other towns like Cajamarca, Trujillo, and so on. After their collective conversion, these people migrated to Israel and they, make, uh, they made a first Aliyah in, 19, uh, in 1992 and a second followed soon after. Now we ask the questions. Were these people or a part among them, 
descendants of the new Christians from the colonial times, and we wonder if there is a relation between the oral tradition of Selendin's Jewish origin and the collective conversion to Judaism in 1989. If the answer is positive, it will confirm the persistence of a Marano memory in Peru. And anticipating to the conclusion, of course, the answer is neither yes, neither no. Historical uh, phenomena are much more complex. First part, the components of the problem. I have to come back briefly to the collective conversion in uh, 1989. The story begins in the years 1950s with the religious guide Segundo Villanueva, who was born in Selendin in 1927 in a country family. Segundo Villanueva was 12 years old when, after his father's death, he received as a legacy a Bible translated in Spanish. He tells that, reading the Old Testament, he came to the conclusion, I quote, that the practices of the Hebrews were the only way. End of quotation. Little by little, he convinced his relatives and friends. They observed the Saturday rest, and for several years, they joined a group of the Seventh day Adventists. Uh, later, Villanueva and his uh, followers decided to give up all Christian practices and to celebrate only the Jewish festivals. New members were joining, and Villanueva called the growing congregation Israel de Dios, Israel of God. The believers were from diverse origin. The majority among them were mestizos, Peruvian descendants from mixed unions between Spanish and Indians, but some of them claimed to be descendants of the new Christians from the colonial times. However, we have no sure evidence. Thus, the question is, to what extent a new Christian origin, it's to say a Marano memory, played a role in the joining to the congregation Israel de Dios, and in the final official conversion to Judaism. And what is the evidence of a Marano memory? Here, I have to remind briefly also the experience of my fieldwork investigation in northeastern Brazil, where I collected the ethnographical data and life stories I presented in my book, Marano Memories, a book dedicated to Anita Novinsky. And one of the evidence of a Marano memory in northeastern Brazil, as Anita also recalled, uh, is the observance of family particular customs. Judaizing practices, even if the origin of the custom is not always conscious. For example, lighting up a candle on Friday evening in the honor to the angel. The present movement of return to Judaism in northeastern Brazil and other regions arose and developed among the families which were still conserving these traditional customs, even if the religious quest of these people also went through an evangelist episode. And we may say that these family customs are a convincing 
kind of a Marano memory. This is why the main purpose of my recent fieldwork in uh, Peru, in Selendin, was to research if in this town and its region we can find customs similar to those which are or were practiced in northeastern Brazil. And uh, at my knowledge, until now, there was no ethnographical investigation in Selendin and, the, and its region. Well. Second part, the first fieldwork investigations in Selendin. I began my interviews in Selendin with some of the local scholars, teachers or journalists who had written about the history of the province. And immediately arose a problem that seemed a paradox. These first informants confirmed the Jewish origin of the family, they were proud of it, but in the same time, they proved to be very Christian, they claimed a fervent Catholic faith, and they had never heard about particular family customs. And even stranger, when I asked about the group who converted to Judaism in 1989 they, uh, and after migrated to Israel, they had never heard about this story. At the most, they had heard about a visit to Cajamarca and Selendin of the Israeli ambassador in Peru but they could not precise the date. Well, the first informant I interviewed was an author of, uh, who published several historical books about Selenian's people and folklore, Manuel Silva Rabanal, 80 years old, who he published recently Folklore Vivo de Mi Pueblo, Forjadores de la Cultura Selendina. I have no PowerPoint, but this is a copy of his book. I began asking him about the origin of his family. Don Manuel answered and has written, published, that his ancestor was a Portuguese Jew. The Colonel Raimundo Pereira, who came from Brazil in the middle of the 18th century, toward 1760. He arrived in Selendin following the Amazon River and the Maranion Way. We will see the Maranion River now. Please, the picture is taken from the pass which is about Selendin. The Maranion River is here at the bottom. 2,000 meters, the uh, different, uh, difference of level, 2,000 meters, and more uh, three hours driving down the slope to uh, arrive to the River Maranon, the following view, please. Here we are on the Maranon River. The Maranon River, uh, many uh, very far from there, is the Amazon, as you know. Well, so why this ancestor, um, Raimundo Pereira, was migra migrating from Brazil? Manuel Silva Rabanal's family tradition is very clear. The ancestor, Raimundo Pereira, was fleeing the persecution of the Portuguese Inquisition. At this time, a great estate stretched in the valley of Selendin, an hacienda named La Pura y Limpia Concepción de Selendin, then 
the Portuguese migrants rented parts of lands. At the end of the 18th century, the valley of Selendin was occupied by a numerous population composed by Spanish, Portuguese, Indians, and Mestizos. In 1802, the same Raimundo Pereira was elected as its first mayor. I could consult the historical documentation and uh, it's to say the first book of the municipal archives and this book confirms that uh, the composition of the first town council uh, included as first mayor um, Raimundo Pereira. So it may be said that Jews really founded or contributed eminently to found the city at this time Villa of Selendi. And Don Manuel Silva Rabanal is able to state the genealogical tree between himself and his ancestor. The story was told to him by his grandmother, Maria Amalia Pereira Bazan, who was grand, grand, granddaughter of Raimundo Pereira. Well, I have to cut and to until the third part about traces of a Marano memory. Because the director of Selendis Municipal Archives, when I consulted the first book, Victor Manuel Paredes Jimenez, confided to me some personal comments. He remembered that his grandfather mentioned to him a particular custom in his family, uh, in his family for mourning. During a period he could not precise exactly, some days, a week, the close relatives of the deceased stayed together in a room, eating seated on low seats or on mats put on the ground. Well, only one data. Ultimately, ultimately, the last witness I interviewed at the end of my stay gave me important information. It was difficult to meet him because he's very distrustful, but after some delays, I succeeded to have an interview with Mr. Hector Leon, the owner of a prosperous restaurant in Cajamarca, which is closed on Saturday. And of course, this Mr. Leon is belong, belonged to the group of people who converted formally to Judaism in 1990. Uh, this informant claims to be a descendant of the new Christian Judaizers from colonial times. His version of the history uh, has its own coherence. Um, the Jews uh, arrived in Peru at the time of the expulsion by Queen Isabel, but I have to speak also about um, Hector Leon's personal comments. The physical appearance of this witness is that of a Peruvian mestizo with a tan complexion, but he presents at the same time a remarkable distinctive feature. He really has green eyes, light green eyes. And he comments, moreover, our blood is mixed and my Jewish faith comes from my Jewish blood. About the history of Segundo Villanueva congregation, Israel de Dios, he also confirms that the greater part of the members were Peruvian mestizos <coughs> and generally evangelist believers whose religions, whose religious evolution ended up at the conversion to Judaism. So, in that case, we cannot speak of a Marano memory. 
If the greater part of the Israel religious congregation members were Peruvian mestizos, it means that another part, even smaller, would be descendants of the former new Christians, and then what about a Marano memory? I had not much time at this time <laughs> to uh, have more uh, investigation, but I noticed um, in the speech of this informant a characteristic sentence which, had, which I had heard frequently pronounced in Brazil by the Brazilian Anusim, and which is also mentioned in the inquisitorial archives, I quote, I quote, remember that God is one, only one, and all the saints are pieces of wood. This is a typical Marano sentence. So the conclusions seem to be paradoxical. First, the more authentic descendants of Portuguese Jews from colonial times are and were fervent Catholic. Apparently, they neither practiced Marano customs nor have memory about it. They have only an historical memory of their Jewish origin and the more authentic descendants among them cultivate a proudness about the purity of their white Jewish blood. Second, the majority of the believers who converted formally to Judaism at the end of last century are Peruvian mestizos, and in that case, it is not a matter of Marano memory, but quite simply of religious faith. Third, nevertheless, nevertheless, I could find some traces of a Marano memory with the remembrance of Marano customs practiced in, by the ancestors. Finally, Hector Leon's story allows to make the vinculation between memory of a Jewish origin and Marano memory. But the theme needs much more investigation. Thank you. Thank you very much.